I'm a huge fan of Jane Austen. I return to her stories time and time again, either through rereading the books or through watching film and television adaptations. I've also been known to make a few Jane Austen themed projects, one of which I shared on my channel a couple of years ago. But did you know that Jane Austen was a needleworker too? Did you know that she made a patchwork coverlet with her mother and sister? And did you know that she did embroidery? Well, today I'm going to take you on a little journey, an exciting trip that I went on to visit her house and to learn a little bit more about that side of Jane Austen. But before we do that, I would just like to say a huge thank you to Serious Readers for sponsoring today's video and I will share more about them later in the video. So I visited the house earlier this year in April and I have to say I was actually the only visitor there. My husband and son went to play in a children's play park just across the road and I had her whole house to myself which was so lucky. I got to see so many beautiful things in there and of course her very famous writing desk and it was really emotional. I was holding back tears as I walked around the house and gardens and just seeing where she wrote her amazing novels and how she has changed the world from that little table. I just thought it was so special. There were so many things to see in the house that were just so special, like first editions of Pride and Prejudice, but it was learning about the side of Jane in which she did sewing that really inspired me. It was lovely to see her personal sewing items, like this little sewing case with little spools of thread inside it, and a needle case that she gave to her niece. And we also learnt about the sorts of needles that she used that were made in Redditch in Worcestershire and I just think that is absolutely fascinating. Jane did embroidery and in the bottom of this case you can see a handkerchief in which she embroidered her sister's initials on and then in the next room we have this beautiful muslin shawl which was thought to be embroidered by Jane as well. But the really spectacular piece is this patchwork coverlet which was made by Jane, her mother and her sister Cassandra using the English paper piecing technique. This coverlet is huge, it measures over two and a half metres long and over two metres wide and it's made using diamonds. Now they are actually five pointed diamonds not six pointed diamonds that we frequently used today in English paper piecing. It's a medallion style quilt so it has a central diamond which has a basket of flowers fussy cut in it and then it, that is surrounded by 249 smaller diamonds and on the outer edge there are 2,500 tiny diamonds and there are so many fabrics in this quilt and we'll talk about that a little bit later on but it really is truly spectacular. That trip was five months ago, it is now September and before I show you what I made inspired by that visit I would like to tell you about Serious Readers who are kindly sponsoring today's video. Autumn is well and truly in the air and as the season changes the days gradually shorten and with that comes a reduction in the amount of natural light that we get. So it is at this time of year that I return to my serious light. I have the high definition serious light and as you can see here it illuminates my workspace so clearly and that is because it uses something called daylight wavelength technology and that replicates the daylight spectrum as closely as technically possible. Working under this light makes it so easy to see what I'm doing, I just can't stitch without it. 
I also love how customizable the light is. You can brighten it and dim it to suit your needs and you can also position it to wherever you need it to be. I'll leave a link in the description box to where you can find out more information and if you were to decide to purchase a high definition light you can use the offer code SR408 to get £100 off your high definition light and also free delivery. A huge thank you to Serious Readers for sponsoring today's video. So after seeing that spectacular coverlet, I wanted to make a project inspired by it. So I went home and had a look through my fabrics and I really had a bit of a difficult time trying to decide whether to go for more modern colours or whether to choose things that are more in keeping with the style of the Jane Austen coverlet, which is what I went for in the end. But I'm not trying to make a replica. If you're interested in making an exact replica of this coverlet then there are patterns out there already and Riley Blake Designs have reproduced the actual fabric that are in the coverlet so you can even buy those and I'll leave a link below to where you can find out more information but I settled on this colour palette for my small quilt that I'm making that will be inspired by the Jane Austen coverlet. So this Liberty print really spoke to me because it has this big bouquet of flowers and I thought that would be a great alternative to the basket of flowers print that is in the centre of the Jane Austen coverlet. So I decided to focus and cut out one of these for the focal point of my little quilt that I'm making. Next I added some borders around it to frame it in a off-white cotton. Next I took some 60 degree diamonds, they're one and a quarter inch diamonds, they're actually made from hexiform and I'm using these because that's what I had to hand so they're not even the, the exact same diamonds that are in the Jane Austen coverlet but I'm fine with that. I would love to make a replica, I think it's stunning but I just wouldn't be able to do it for a video and yeah it would take me many years but maybe one day. But I'm just playing around with them to get a position of where I'd like them to be. My plan is to applique them around this central motif and then see where to go with this next. Now for where to go next, I took some inspiration from the fabric placement in the Jane Austen coverlet. So you can see here there's a real symmetry about this quilt and you can see there are red diamonds that really stand out. Also the fabrics have been fussy cut in particular ways and the way it's laid out is just really symmetrical so I wanted to replicate that in what I'm doing. So I chose this poppy print to start with and all I'm doing is just placing my hexiform diamonds on the part of the poppy that I want to centralise on the diamond. And I'm just looking for that exact same poppy each time as I cut them out and baste them. And to baste diamonds it's just really simple. I just cut them out with about a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then I just go around in the same direction folding over that seam allowance. And if you do it that way it just keeps them all neat because you do get the little dog ears at the top and bottom of the diamond. But I'm going to tuck those in because I'm appliqueing the diamonds rather than stitching them to each other. So to do that I just add an extra dab of glue and then fold the point back on itself and play around with it a little bit to try and keep it as pointy as possible. So I just used that method for all of the diamonds that I cut out and you can see on this print the motifs are more clearly defined. So that makes it a great print for fussy cutting. So I just made sure to look for the same flower each time. And I did this roughly. I didn't spend a long time making sure I got each one identical to each other because that actually takes the joy out of it for me. I just wanted it to be sort of symmetrical and a bit like the Jane Austen version. And 
This method seemed to work really well, as you can see these two are quite similar. The way I've positioned the fabrics is just like they are in the Jane Austen coverlet, even with two together, two the same together, that you do see in her coverlet. So I just used the glue pen to tack them in place and then I used some pins as well to make sure that they weren't going to move before I appliqued them. I decided that at this point I was just going to make it quite a mini quilt so I put the wadding underneath and pinned it to it to do my applique because I like to have a bit of structure behind it when I do applique if I can. However, as these projects often go when you're making it up as you go along without a proper plan and you're not following a pattern, I later decided to make it a little bit bigger and more of a substantial wall hanging so I add extra bits on and I'm going to put more wadding on the back of it to make it the right size. Of course I had to watch a film adaptation of Emma whilst I was doing this stitching because, well, just what you got to do, isn't it? So this is what it looked like when all of the diamonds had been appliqued on and now it was time to add some borders to frame the centre even more. Added two borders and I really like the way that it looks and it could be finished here just like this at this size. I really like it and I think it's going to look really nice on the wall somewhere in my house but I'm not sure. I think I might be tempted to add another frame of diamonds, another border of diamonds to go around it. I'm really tempted and then add another border of fabric again, I don't know. So I'm just going to leave it as it is for now and then think about it some more and in an upcoming video I will show you what I decided to do when I finish it off. So thank you so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it I will leave a link here to another Jane Austen themed video that I've made. It was a couple of years ago but I have to say this video is probably one of my favourites that I've ever made. It was really enjoyable and I hope you enjoy it too. Thank you so much to everyone who's supporting me through Patreon. It really means so much to me and thank you if you've pressed the super thanks button as well. Take care. See you soon. Bye bye. <laughs>